Lost media is an umbrella term for media that no longer exists, is missing, or is not available to the general public. Lost media could be a lot of things, such as lost episodes, lost theme songs, lost movies, etc. Those examples of lost media are pretty innocent, but when you dig deeper into the rabbit hole, lost media can get dark. This includes inappropriate storyboards from your favorite cartoons, video recordings of a beloved actor losing his life on set, and audio recordings of a famous bear enthusiast being mauled to death by a grizzly bear. So in today's video, Tub and I will be talking about the mysterious world of lost media. Hey guys, welcome back to another Morbid for Fun video. That's right, Aaron actually hit 100,000 subscribers. I never thought you would make it, buddy. I thought you were gonna be stuck at 100. I'm just kidding. I'm very proud of you, man. Like, you actually made this happen. And it's just nice seeing another Latino YouTuber, like, making it. So, shout out to you, man. And it, it's also nice just, just witnessing your channel go from literally zero to 100,000 and even more. So, man, this is awesome. And I already know you love being a YouTuber. I know this is your dream. And I know you were telling people you were going to collab with the Tuv at 100,000. So, let's get right into it. This is our collaboration video. A Day with Spongebob A Day with Spongebob is an unofficial Spongebob movie that was discovered as a listing on Amazon. This movie was not made by Nickelodeon, but instead a mockumentary made by Regal Films, who is a distribution company. Some theories claim that this company is very sketchy and can most likely be a fake company just to launder money, but that is just a theory. A film theory, I guess you can call it. The movie's premise is about Spongebob living above ground like all Hollywood stars. Afraid that Spongebob is becoming old news, his boss runs a contest called Spend a Day with Spongebob as thousands of kids enter to win. The lucky winner is Seth and he is ecstatic about his day with Spongebob. However, the day becomes a roller coaster ride as things do not go quite the way they planned. When 4chan discovered the Amazon listing, they try to purchase a few copies but to no success. Employees of Hastings, which is a movie and bookstore, actually had the movie in their system only available for employees, but when the employees bought the movie online, there was still no success. After contacting as many people who have worked on the film and the company, people found an alleged creator of the film, and he confirmed that the movie hasn't been made, but was planning to release it later the following year if they get enough money from crowdfunds. But we still got nothing and the crowdfund never happened. This is a very confusing rabbit hole if you dig deeper to the origins of the movie because they also claim that the movie didn't have an official cast, only had the script done, didn't have the funds to make the movie, and the kid on the movie poster is just a stock image that you can purchase online. So the movie was nowhere near ready so why was there a listing on Amazon? Your guess is just as good as mine. Clockman in 2012, a user called Commander Sansa would post on the Flood forums asking if anybody remembers a short from his childhood where a kid is sleeping in his room, and when the clock strikes 12, this clockman figure would abduct the kid. Commander Sansa claims that he's been looking for this short for about 4 years now and thinks the Flood forum can help him find the video. Commander Sansa also gave a good lead by saying that he remembers seeing this short on Pinwheel. Pinwheel is a children's show that aired on Nickelodeon from 1977 to 1984, but there's a small problem. There's a total of 260 episodes and each of the episodes is one hour long, which means there are 260 total hours of footage to review. But 260 hours shouldn't be that hard. There should be a couple people that would love to scour those clips. But there's another problem. Most pinwheel episodes aren't available online and there weren't any DVD or VHS releases. Also, Clockman wasn't even the actual name of this short. It was just what Commander Sansa called it. Over the next five years, some new information would surface, but the Clockman short was still Lost Media. And the owner of the Lost Media Wiki, Dykate, posted about Clockman to the Lost Media Wiki, bringing more light to this lost piece after people gave up on the search. Dykate even tried contacting the Nickelodeon employees that worked on Pinwheel, but there was no luck. Michael Karp actually got back to Dike and was the director, writer, and voice actor on Pinwheel. Michael said he didn't have a copy of Clockman since he worked on later seasons of the show, but he knew somebody who worked on the first season and possibly has the Clockman short, and that was executive producer Lois Tippy Fortune. She gave a few good leads, but sadly didn't have it. She also gave Dike emails from other people who were involved with acquiring programming for the show, but that's pretty much it. 
And finally, after December 10th, 2017, five years after the search initially started, Lost Media Wiki user Nitrate Nerd began his own research. He found a YouTube link that would take him to a video called Sally, and he found the link on World Cat which is a library catalog of media. The Sally YouTube video was the Clockman short that Commander Santa was looking for, and he did confirm that the video has actually been found. Who would have known that this piece of lost media was on YouTube this entire time? Scare PewDiePie Season 2 Scare PewDiePie is an American comedy horror reality YouTube Red series that stars the one and only PewDiePie. In the show, Felix plays horror video games IRL, meaning he's put into situations from popular horror video games that he played on his channel, such as Outlast, Five Nights at Freddy's, and many more. The first episode was aired on February 10th, 2016 and only had one season with 10 episodes, but a second season was greenlit. The second season was called Scary PewDiePie Multiplayer in which PewDiePie would now be going against Jacksepticeye on going through scary video games such as the first season. Season 2 was meant to have 20 episodes with many other YouTubers appearing in it as well. Scary PewDiePie Multiplayer was set to release on March 9th, 2017, but got cancelled due to PewDiePie's anti-Semitic Fiverr video. So yeah, the second season of PewDiePie's show is now lost media with no leaks, but PewDiePie did film some behind the scene footage because in 2016, during the filming of Scary PewDiePie Multiplayer, he would make an LA vlog series called Birdabo. In the fourth vlog, it shows PewDiePie with Ethan Klein from H3H3 H3 Productions covered in fake blood, and on the H3 podcast, Ethan would tell a story of him having a panic attack on the set of Scared PewDiePie. I'm like, yo, dude, can you call a producer? I'm having a panic attack. And he's, and they gave me this, they're like, hey, uh, what, hey, I just do, I just do the pyrotechnics. It's not my job. It was also revealed in that same episode of the H3 podcast that Markiplier was also in the show. And he had to eat a pig's testicle while PewDiePie had to eat a pig's brain. Uh, on, on Felix's uh, show, like, Scare PewDiePie mm -hmm. season two, like, I had to Rest in pieces. <laughs> yeah. I heard about it. I was on that, too. Yeah, you, you were? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember. You were, of course, you told me you were. Well, but yeah. I had to eat a pig testicle. And all that. Is I know that's never yeah, going to see the light of day. Really? <laughs> so Felix was telling me the story about Scare PewDiePie season two, and he was like, in our episode, he lost and he had to eat, like, a pig brain or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On the sixth vlog, Cinnamon Toast Ken would be a guest for Scary PewDiePie Multiplayer, which PewDiePie gets covered in poop. And it is claimed that Ken did something that episode that got Felix really mad at him. In the ninth vlog, it is revealed that Captain Sparkles was a part of the show too, and the episode was based off the game Overcooked, which is not even a horror video game. On the eleventh vlog, it is revealed that Anthony Padilla was a part of the show, and their episode was based on the video game Sunset Riders since they wore cowboy bandit clothing. On the 13th vlog, Felix says that the episode of Scare PewDiePie would feature Luzu and the Scare PewDiePie episode would be set in a prison and be based off the video game Uncharted. Well, they just told me prison and the guest is Luzu, so... They told you! And the game is Uncharted. Who told you this? And finally, Jessica Nagiri would post a picture of herself and Felix together on Twitter, both wearing Japanese schoolgirl outfits, and then J-Law posted a picture of Felix in the same costume, saying that this was from an episode of Scary PewDiePie based off the video game Yandere Simulator. It is a shame that Season 2 never came out because so many people worked so hard on making the Season 2 just for it not to come out. PewDiePie did make a joke saying that if he gets 100,000 retweets, he would release season 2, but he just made a joke video and it wasn't the official season, because if he did leak the real season, then he would get in serious trouble. Spongebob Deleted Scenes Now, Spongebob needs no introduction, as it's the only cartoon that has aged the best, and if your parents didn't let you watch Spongebob, then you probably didn't have a childhood. Anyway, Spongebob has a few deleted scenes, such as Mrs. Puff's dad, which was actually going to be voiced by Tom Kenny, but that scene has yet to surface. Another piece of lost media relating to Spongebob is the episode Sailor Mouth. This is an iconic Spongebob episode that we all remember where Spongebob, Patrick, and Mr. Krabs would swear. The episode that aired on TV was censored, of course, by the boat horns or dolphin sounds. However, while recording the episode, the cast members actually used real cuss words. At first, they were just supposed to be some substitute words, but Tom Kenny, the voice of Spongebob, actually suggested, why not use cuss words? No one's going to hear these anyway. They're just going to be edited over. And that's actually how they recorded it. So Nickelodeon most likely has these files somewhere, but... They're probably never going to release this considering it's a kid's company and it would just hurt their image. If you want to know what it may have sounded like, people on YouTube have actually made some really good edits. But yeah, let's head on to the next one. Black Panther 2 Original Script 
As we know, Black Panther Wakanda Forever has been released worldwide, but weeks before Chadwick Boseman's passing, Ryan Coogler, the director of the movie, would finish the original script for Black Panther 2, which would have starred Chadwick Boseman. Ryan Coogler was on the official Black Panther podcast in which he was asked about the original script, in which he replied with, I had just finished it. My last conversation with him was calling him and asking if he wanted to read it before I got notes from his studio. That was the last time we spoke, and he passed maybe a couple of weeks after I finished. In an interview from Inverse, Coogler also talked about what the original script was going to be about, and believe it or not, it was actually pretty similar from what we got in Black Panther Wakanda Forever. But instead of grieving T'Challa's passing, the original script would have T'Challa grieving the five years taken away from him since he was dusted by the Thanos snap, aka the blip. Coogler said, The character was going to be grieving the loss of time, you know? Coming back after being gone for five years as a man with so much responsibility to so many. Coming back after he forced five years away, that's what the film was tackling. He was grieving the time he couldn't get back. Grief was a big part of it. It has been confirmed that Namor would still have been the villain for the original version of the script, but it is a shame that we will never see T'Challa versus Namor. Ryan Coogler, Marvel Studios, and the cast of Black Panther Wakanda Forever are the only ones with the original script since a handful of the main cast did read the original script. Will Marvel or Ryan ever release the original script to the public? From the looks of it, not anytime soon. So for the meantime, this is Lost Media. Rude Removal, Dexter's Laboratory. Rude Removal is an unaired episode of Dexter's Laboratory that was set to release on Cartoon Network on February 21st, 1998. This episode would have Dexter making a machine where he was able to clone him and his sister to have split personalities. One pair of Dexter and Dee Dee would be very polite, and the other pair would be extremely rude and use adult language. Yeah, oh, dear. This episode was rejected by Cartoon Network because of the adult language, which meant it never released. People have made campaigns trying to get this episode released, and on November 30th, 2012, Adult Swim would tweet out asking fans if they would like to see the lost unaired episode of Rude Removal. Adult Swim is a subsidiary company to Cartoon Network, so that's how they were able to get it. People were excited, and on January 22nd, 2013, Adult Swim actually aired the Rude Removal episode. Johnny Quasar Jimmy Neutron is a popular Nickelodeon show that aired on Nickelodeon from 2002 all the way to 2006, but in 1995, DNA Production made a short 40 second demo called Johnny Quasar. This demo was so popular within DNA Production that a producer picked it up, funded a pilot, and pitched the idea to Nickelodeon. The name would then change from Johnny Quasar to Jimmy Neutron. The Johnny Quasar demo was posted to YouTube in 2017 by the voice actor of Johnny Quasar, meaning that this was lost media for 22 years. Kurt Cobain, Ren and Stimpy theme song. Kurt Cobain was an American musician, best known as a lead vocalist, guitarist, and primary songwriter for the rock band Nirvana. Before Nirvana took off, it's said by Billy West, which is the voice actor of Stimpy, that Kurt Cobain wrote a theme song for the Ren and Stimpy show. One day the scraggly kid comes in and said he wanted to write a song for Ren and Stimpy and they they said, yeah, that's great, and they threw it in the wastebasket. Oh. It was Kurt Cobain. Oh, shit. <laughs> Keep in mind, this could have been a joke by Billy West, but this could be true. No one really knows. It's rumored that there's a demo somewhere in his archives. Spider-Man 4 When I say Spider-Man 4, I'm referring to the cancelled Tobey Maguire Spider-Man 4. Sam Raimi was set to direct the fourth movie, since he's the one responsible for the last three Spider-Man movies. The movie was set to release on May 6, 2011, according to Sony's infamous tweet. But Sam Raimi decided to back out last minute since he was burnt out because at the time, he would have been working on Spider-Man for almost 10 years and had a lot of pressure since he wanted Spider-Man 4 to be the best Spider-Man film of all time since the third one wasn't well received by fans. Sam Raimi himself has called the third movie awful, although I disagree because it was quite enjoyable. Another reason why he backed out on making the fourth movie was because a studio would always get in the way of his work, suggesting Sam to add more villains, which Sam didn't want to, since that's one factor why the third movie was hated. Sam Raimi also had difficulties with the script, since there were three total versions of the script, and Sony was planning to reboot the franchise anyways. Raimi said, I don't want to make a movie that is less than great, so I think we shouldn't make this picture. Go ahead with your reboot, which you've been planning anyway. And the Sony chairman, Amy Pascal, would then say, Thank you. 
Thank you for not wasting the studio's money, and I appreciate your candor. I couldn't find an exact date when this happened, but a few years ago, a storyboard would leak showing what Spider-Man 4 could have been. The beginning of the storyboard showed that Mysterio would make a cameo in the film, showing him being arrested, and it is claimed that Bruce Campbell would have played Mysterio. And the main villain of the film would have been the Vulture, played by John Malkovich. In this storyboard, it would show the Vulture fighting Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man and really injuring him in the process. But then two weeks ago, new Spider-Man 4 Lost Media would have surfaced. For the first ever time, real images of the Vulture prototype wingsuit would have leaked online. We would also learn new information about the movie as well, stating that the Vulture would have a daughter played by Angelina Jolie, and her character would be the Vultress. Another character revealed for that movie was Felicia Hardy, aka the Black Cat, and she would be played by Anne Hathaway. Before the Spider-Man 4 movie was completely scrapped, they were in the development phase, so that's why they made a few props for the film, which was later cancelled, and who knows, there may be more props from the movie that are still lost media. Shrek cringe compilation meme. We've all seen the infamous meme of Shrek holding a camera saying this will be going in his cringe compilation, and people usually send this meme to their friends whenever they say something cringeworthy, but where did this actually come from? Shrek has never held a camera in any of his movies. Is this a possible commercial? Well, if you zoom into the camera, you can see that the camera is an HP PhotoSmart 945 camera released in 2003. So this photo is an advertisement. And DreamWorks did do commercials for HP. For example, in 2005, they released a commercial mainly centered on Donkey complaining about his receding mane and asking the CGI department to fix it by using more realistic graphics. And it's later said that DreamWorks would be making Shrek 2 using HP programming. And in 2007, there was another Shrek commercial about Fiona promoting an HP laptop but the Donkey and Fiona commercials are the only ones that exist. People speculate that there's a lost Shrek commercial showing the image that this all started with, and then a Twitter user found this advertisement of Shrek with a camera that looks like the meme, but the meme isn't from that advertisement. Could the meme be from another advertisement? Who knows? For now, it's just the origins of the Shrek cringe compilation meme. Rugrat Storyboard Jam A storyboard jam is a storyboard that is started, passed around, and added to by different members of a production crew of a cartoon, often resulting in rather lewd or offensive depictions. Basically fan fiction, but this time made by the official animators working on the show. Rugrats don't need an introduction since the show is widely popular, and Steve Russell, a man who worked on the cartoon, released a panel of the Rugrats storyboard jam depicting Angelica yelling at Tommy, telling him to get her a drink. So Tommy gets her a drink, laced with Drano and dog food. Then Dee Dee gets mad at Tommy, resulting in Stu getting in the way by pushing Dee Dee by grabbing her face and cussing her out. Stu then threatens Tommy, telling him to give tribute to the alpha male, or else he'll kick Tommy's ass. This causes Tommy to twitch uncontrollably, which Angelica gets turned on by. Stu then replies to Angelica, saying, That's right, my little C-word. One day, you'll be daddy's little girl. <laughs> This was just one page of the storyboard jam that has been released, and we don't know where the full version of the storyboard is. People speculate that this is locked away or that the rest has been destroyed. It is also said that there is murder in the full version of the storyboard. I doubt that the full version will ever get released, so it's lost media forever. Super Smash Bros. Slamfest 99 Slamfest 99 was an event hosted by Nintendo in 1999, and it showed people dressed up as Super Smash Bros. characters. These characters included Mario, Yoshi, Donkey Kong, and Pikachu, and they all battled it out in a boxing ring. This event was live-streamed, but only photos of the event exist, while the full livestream is just lost media. It's surprising this is lost media, because a lot of people went there, but no one took videos. Everyone just took pictures. There's no video footage of this. Sesame Street Episode 847 This episode of Sesame Street only aired once on February 10th, 1976 and features Margaret Hamilton reprising her role as the Wicked Witch of the West from The Wizard of Oz. This episode only aired once because on the initial release, a lot of younger viewers were terrified of the witch, causing a bit of backlash to Sesame Street. Then Sesame Street would lock this episode up for good and ban the episode from ever airing again. The episode shows the witch losing her broom and the episode revolves around her trying to get it back. But then in 2019, the Museum of the Moving Picture would host an event called Sesame Street Lost and Found 
where they would air Lost Sesame Street episodes, including episode 847. YouTuber Blame It On Jorge would go to the event and claim that the full episode didn't air. It was only the main segment featuring the witch, which was still never before seen footage. Clearly they didn't allow recording at the event, but that didn't stop people from doing so. Finally on June 18th, 2022, the full episode got leaked onto Reddit. Till this day, nobody really knows how it happened, but in October of 2021, the American Archive of Public Broadcasting had a data breach. The AAPB were the only ones to have the full episode archive, and on Twitter they said that somebody went in to download Sesame Street episodes. Could the people who hacked into the AAPB be responsible for the Sesame Street leak? Most likely, yes. Brandon Lee, The Crow Brandon Lee, the son of Bruce Lee, was set to play the crow for the crow movie. This was supposed to be Brandon's big break. Brandon filmed most of his scenes, but then on March 31st, 1993, he was supposed to film a scene where his character would get shot. In Hollywood, they use real guns for the movies, but they use prop bullets. Actor Michael Massey was instructed to shoot Brandon for the scene, but the bullet inside was faulty. Before they shot Brandon, they used the same gun for another scene. When they fired the gun for the first time, it had a dummy round, which got stuck in the barrel. Then for the scene where they would shoot Brandon, they switched out the dummy rounds for blank rounds. Blank rounds are just as safe as dummy rounds, but when you shoot out a blank round and there's a dummy round stuck inside of the barrel, it basically creates a real bullet. Sadly, Brandon Lee passed away that day being fatally shot. The movie production was on its last two weeks of filming and because Brandon had passed, they needed doubles and CGI to finish the scenes that Brandon couldn't be a part of. Since they were filming when Brandon passed away, that means that it was recorded and the video was locked away somewhere. Some people that were on set claimed that they have a video of his death on like a separate camera, but luckily none of those have been leaked. There are probably lies too. Owen Hart's death. Owen Hart was a former WWF wrestler. In 1999, he would have a wrestling gimmick called the Blue Blazer, and a part of that gimmick is that Owen would descend from the rafters to the ring in a harness. Owen has done this stunt multiple times, but on May 23rd, 1999, on the Over the Edge pay-per-view, Owen would have to do the stunt again, but this time without guide wires. When Owen was about to make his entrance to the ring, he would place full weight onto the harness, which snapped, leading him fall to his death. Right when this happened, the WWF would put up a pre-recorded promo on screen so the people at home watching the event wouldn't be able to see the tragic event. Recordings of the tragedy does exist and it is in the WWE archives, but will never get released. Only audio and photos of the tragedy have surfaced online. Timothy Treadwell Audio Timothy Treadwell, also known as the Grizzly Man, was a bear enthusiast, environmentalist, documentary filmmaker, and founder of the bear protection organization Grizzly People. Timothy would always get dangerously close to bears on his documentaries, which eventually led to his death. On October 5th, 2003, Timothy and his girlfriend would go camping in a national park where they would both be mauled to death by a grizzly. Timothy would have his camera at the time to record what was happening, but the lens cap was still on, leading Timothy to pick up the audio of him and his girlfriend's deaths. The audio does exist, and the person that has the audio is one of Timothy's ex-girlfriends. A documentary about Treadwell was made in 2005 in which the director was allowed to listen to the real audio. The director then told the ex-girlfriend that she should destroy the tape, but she ended up keeping it and not destroying it. And now the tape is locked away in a deposit box. Osama Bin Laden Body Photos Osama Bin Laden is known to be responsible for the attack. Yeah, I can no longer say a date of the year on YouTube, but we know which day we're talking about. On May 2nd, 2011, Osama Bin Laden was shot several times and killed at his compound in the Pakistani city of Abbottabad. He was killed by former United States Navy SEAL Robert J. O'Neill. After identifying his body, the military brought him aboard the USS Carl Vinson and buried him in the Northern Arabian Sea the same day. Before they buried him, they took photos of his corpse so they could document the condition of the body. These photos have not yet been released, and who knows if they would ever be released, but I doubt it. And that is the end to the long-awaited Tov collab. Thank you so much for sticking with me from the start, and of course, thank you for 100,000 subscribers in under a year. 
we finally did it. The Tuv collab that we were trying to get since this channel had only 5k subscribers. It has honestly been an amazing journey and who knows, more collabs in the future. Thank you again for sticking with me and don't forget to check me out on my other social medias but other than that, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. See you guys. Alright, that was it for my time here on the Morbid for Fun channel. Um, shout out Aaron, bro. You actually, I'm gonna say congratulations to you again, man. Like, 100,000. That's insane. Like, let's, let's get ready for a million, bro. It'll happen next week. <sighs> but yeah, you guys that are watching this, make sure to subscribe to Morbid for Fun. Subscribe to Tuv. And, uh, go buy it. Go shop at EarlDoesn'tExist.com. Go fucking shop at EarlDoesn'tExist.com. Had to promote. Had to self-promo. But yeah, I I'm still gonna send my outro, so I'll see you guys next time I upload. Thank you.